it's Vasco from the Angular University. Welcome! Let's get started learning reactive programming. First, I have a quick question for you. What is the number one difficulty that you have while building applications with Angular? Please let me know in the comments below. Actually, I ask this same question many times in my mailing list and the number one reply that I get is RxJS and observables. So the number one difficulty is really not the framework itself, it's more what are the advantages of building applications in reactive style, how do we do that, what are the main concepts around RxJS, how do we use it correctly. The good news is that reactive programming is really not that hard, it's really not that different from many of the things that you have always been using for building frontends. So where does this difficulty come from? Because reactive programming at its core, it's actually something very simple. So why is it so difficult to learn? I believe that the main reason for that is that we jump straight into the RxJS library, but we don't introduce the observable pattern first. And what is the problem with that? Well, what is RxJS? RxJS is a toolkit that allows us to build asynchronous applications in reactive style using the observable pattern. So if we don't understand the observable pattern and its benefits, we will not be able to make sense of RxJS. On the other hand, if we understand the observable pattern well, the library will make immediate sense including many, if not all, of its multiple operators. It will all make so much more sense if we learn first the observable pattern. That is the basis of reactive programming. So what we're going to do in the next couple of hours is we are going to deep dive into the observable pattern. We are going to understand exactly why it's useful, what are the benefits of building applications in reactive style, and what better way of learning that than by first building a small application that is not built in reactive style, has a set of problems, and then introduce reactive programming and see what are the benefits of doing applications that way. We will introduce the observable pattern and its related concepts, the observer and the subject, and also other concepts that are related to RxJS, but the essential of RxJS is the observable pattern and that's what we're going to be learning in the next couple of lessons step by step so what you are about to see corresponds to the initial part of the reactive patterns angular architecture course the first section is only about the observable pattern then after this first section the course also includes a catalog of patterns for building applications in reactive style both view layer patterns and service layer patterns. And after that, we are also going to do a dive on the RxJS library in further detail, covering some of the operators that we did not get a chance to cover on the first two sections. So without further ado, let's get started learning reactive programming by deep diving in its most fundamental concept, at least in the case of the RxJS library, which is the observable pattern. It's coming right up in the next few lessons.